G'day friends, welcome to today's video. My name is James, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. I got my massive A3 moleskin journal here. Um, it's still in its leather cover, which is a beautiful chic sparrow leather cover. They don't actually sell the A3. Um, this was a gift that I received last year, I believe. Was it last year or the year before? Maybe it was the year before. Um, in any case, this is a big moleskin A3 journal, so it's absolutely massive. And I'm using this today because I'm gonna be stamping out a uh, little image that I was playing with. I'm kind of getting myself ready for creativation, which um, by the time you're watching this on the Friday, I will be traveling too. So uh, hopefully I'm having a great car trip. <laughs> Check in on my Instagram to see if I am. Um, but anyway, so I'll be at creativation all weekend and be demoing at the uh, photocentric booth, which just kind of means that uh, people will come by, I'll say, hello, we'll kind of have a chat. I've got a big book for people to look through and um, I'll just be demoing with the stamps that I've designed. Now, last year I did the concept stamp set, which was um, this one here, which I don't have the actual stuff inside it. Here, this is missing bunches of pieces because they're everywhere, but um, this is the concept stamp set. I had a, a prototype version that I took to the show with me and um, demoed with just to show that I like to use stamps for illustrating and um, and how I liked to do that. And it was super fun to be able to show that because I uh, yeah, I think it, maybe it was something that a lot of people hadn't considered before, but I mean, it's definitely not new. It's been around for centuries, but um, it was nice to go and demo that irrespective. I had a lot of people join in on the fun and kind of um, stamp along with me. And I got to share how how I liked to do it. So um, this year, I don't have any new like prototype show stamp set, but since last year, I've introduced the doll parts stamp set, which is um, this little, this little beauty right here. Now there's tons of different little pieces that go along with it and they build um, bodies. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Figures. Uh, it's very stylized. It almost looks like a uh, stick figure. <laughs> kind of like a fashion figure, really. The proportions are very exaggerated. Um, but something that I personally like to use, which is um, kind of how I end up designing all of my products. Um, and in the past, I have kind of uh, demoed through how I've stamped and uh, created with this stamp set. But today I want to use this one with this one and a bit of an old school one, the Decora set from uh, 2017. Now I know, let me just start by saying, I know this is annoying because there are three different stamp sets and if you don't have one or two or even three of them, um, you're gonna think like, how do I follow along? I'll let you I'll let you be the judge of how you follow along, but I do just wanna say, if you wanna use a different stamp set, like you don't have to use this face to be able to do what I'm doing. You don't even have to use this body. If you can find a body in a magazine that you wanna cut out, then by all means collage the body together. Um, this is a creativity, like play, do you know what I mean? Like we don't have to end up with something that looks exactly the same as each other. And, uh, and I really believe that there's a workaround for pretty much anything, so. Don't stress if you don't have these stamp sets. Um, I, I know they're also really hard to purchase because I am transitioning the store from having just general products for sale to having collections for sale. Um, but the concept stamp set will be back as a part of the staple kind of range and um, some of the body parts will be back as well. I'm just thinking, I'm thinking about rebranding a few things. I'm thinking about changing a few things. So anyway, Leave that for now. Just my disclaimer because I don't want people to think, oh, how do I get that? And then realize that you can't get your hands on it. So best to know up front. I am truly sorry about it. I'm doing my best out here, but I think you'll be fine. Honestly, we're just going to need a head, a body and some stars. This is super simple. Um, I loved how it turned out. It was really effective. I've got Tim Holtz uh, Distress Ink in Antique Linen. I still want a really, really light ink. And like I say, for most every one of these um, stamping and illustration kind of a tutorials, maybe I'll even like second generation stamp it, but I have to be able to show you what I'm doing and it would be too light to show up on the camera. So um, Antique Linen kind of works well and it just, it disappears a little bit. So that's nice. Um, I'm gonna put this on a, a bit of a jaunty angle right here. I want to leave a bit of space between the face and the top of my page because I'm going to put a bunch of stars up there. Now, I set up my body parts, uh, my doll parts stamp set on a few different acrylic blocks. So I know it looks really confusing, but I'm quite aware of where everything is. Um, it's obviously not something you need to do. I just don't like to change out block and stamp and then block and stamp and block. I would rather just know like, oh, body, hip, joint, leg, you know, it, it's kind of just a free-for-all with these few blocks, the, well, how many? Four. I've got four blocks and there's everything I kind of need on there. So yes, it would be tricky to figure that out if you're not aware of which parts are which, but um, you know, maybe if you use them often enough, you'll figure it out. Um, I won't be the judge of that for you. I'm gonna stamp the body on. So she's got a much smaller body than her head, but this body stamps out quite, quite long. So I'm gonna have to start maneuvering her, um, 
her legs so that they don't fly off the edge of the page. Well, technically I've got a lot of page here, but there's not a lot of space on the screen. So I'm going to try and stamp it within the screen, within the frame. So I'm going to uh, kind of jaunty, jaunty angle. Why is that my word for today? It's from Kathleen Kim, but I haven't watched it in ages. I'm going to send this body off, this joint here that connects in the uh, waist. I'm going to push those hips off to the right hand side. Now I get my circle, which is my hip joint, and I put two of my hips in there. And then I'm going to do the legs because I just find it easier to do the legs first. Um, this one I'm going to use to make sure that the straight part of the leg is on the top and I'm going to use that twice. So um, if you are going to try and put a bunch of stamps on one block, just make sure they're spaced out enough so that you can just ink up one part and you don't get ink on the other. And I'm going to send one leg just kind of down off to the right a little bit. And then a little bit of more ink. And I'm gonna send this one. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, we'll make this one kind of go off to the same way. So it's kind of like she's floating in air a little bit. I need my knee. So my knee is the little oval. And I've mentioned this before in the um, video that I made all about the doll parts, but if you are just kind of revisiting it since you first bought the stamp set, or you're just curious to know, um, the oval, you point the points of the oval in the direction that you want the um, the bottom part of the leg to go. So I want the bottom part of the leg to come down here So I need the long the long way of the oval to be on that axis. So that's why I'm gonna stamp it like that And you can see both of them are gonna go down that way Actually, you know, I want one to go straight down. So let's have this one go straight up and down Can you see what I mean? So the lengthwise of the oval is gonna be on the axis that you want the leg to run because then you're gonna stamp out I'm using the same the same leg for both of these as well. So we use the same thigh and we're going to use the same shin for both. I'm going to connect it to that part of the oval. And that's where we know um, how the leg goes and where it goes, how it attaches. And then when you go to trace around it, you'll be able to see the um, where the knee attaches. Now I'm going to get the feet. My little feet. This is going to be a little difficult to see. I want the feet that... Um, I've got them this way. I want the point to be the rounded arch to be on the right hand side and the heel to be on the left. And I'm going to stamp this down onto the um, the bottom of here. I don't put the ankle joint in just because I can't be bothered. I don't usually put it in. Sometimes I don't put the elbow joint in either. <laughs> Sometimes I don't put any of the joints in. It's one of those things where if you play with it long enough, you're just building the base. It's not so that you can, uh, you don't need every single bit to be able to draw every single thing. So I'm going to use the same foot as well and stamp it off to the other foot. I get really messy. I know I should clean my stamps or possibly have them on different blocks, but this is play for me. Like, I don't really care if there's a few extra smudge marks. It's typical of my work. You could even say it's a signature at this point, but um, yeah, it's it's going to be messy. There's going to be fingerprints and DNA all over the page, so don't clone me, please. Anyway, these feet, I did want to mention something because I've seen this happen a little bit um, with this particular stamp set. Um, sometimes there's an urge to... It's not wrong either. Like, I want to say that much. It's not It's not the end of the world if you, could, if you do it this way. Um, but I'll get a darker stamp set so you can hear dark. What did that hear with a darker stamp set? Yeah, that made sense. I'm gonna get a darker stamp ink so you can see. Um, if I've got a leg that comes down here, I'm gonna put two so we can demonstrate the difference. Um, sometimes it's tempting to make the. I'll use the the one where she's standing, like the little flexed demi point. Sometimes it's tempting to add the foot like this. Now there's nothing wrong with that. I just think it's more elegant if you tilt the foot so that it arches at the ankle. See that? That way you get this really nice, um, as you are going to trace it, you don't get this kind of bulged foot here, which again, there is really no problem with this. I'm just simply expressing that this is, um, would be a tip that I would recommend if you were trying to get more of this, um, really forced arch, this really beautiful, um, effect. I would just make sure that the angle you put the, the foot on is more pushed than you would typically do. So not attached like this at the front, uh, but slightly angled kind of off diagonally so that you can get this really nice 
effect. It's not very realistic, but I mean, neither is the rest of the stamp set, so I think we're all uh, fine with accepting that. Um, the same goes with this foot here. Can you see how it's not just uh, put straight, you know, it's not following that same axis where it just goes straight up and down? It's kind of curved around. That's to get a nice little winged, you know, pointed foot. So let's put the arms on. In my sample, I kind of had them on her hips, but I don't want to do that. I want to change it up. Love that. Love just changing it as I go. <laughs> Nothing more nerve wracking. I'm going to put these little shoulders on. So these are the little circles for the shoulders. I've got the top part of my arm. So the upper arm, I'm going to attach that here. And I'm just going to kind of triangle, wing them out a little bit. I'll put my little elbow on. Don't typically do this, but I'll do it for you today. Just a little elbow joint. And now I'm going to take my long forearm stick. I'm going to angle that out. Just like I did before. I kind of just want them to, you know, float. I've got two hands here. I'm going to put one hand on either side. Another thing is... Um, Sometimes there's a temptation to put the hand just following that same axis. I like to tilt it up a little bit so that the hand looks like it's uh, flexed at the wrist rather than like uh, just straight from the forearm. So that's another little tip I like to do. Again, none of this would make sense to you if you weren't actually using the stamp set that I'm talking about, but um, I know there are a bunch of people that have been waiting for more specific tutorials with this stamp set, so this is a great body just here. The one that I probably do most, if not all the time, um, is, is probably a body like this. I would usually cross the legs, but I think it gets a little confusing sometimes. So let's just keep it a little simpler for today. I've got two stars here from the Decora stamp set. Now this is a, an old stamp set. Um, so if you have other stars, that would totally work as well. The point for this was that I just wanted to stamp a bunch of stars all over her. So um, it doesn't even have to be stars, it could be circles. You could use the circle from the knee joint, like this one. Just do a bunch of circles and make these bubbles instead of stars. But I really do like the stars. So I'm gonna put two stars above her eyes because I'm going for a really subtle look today. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put a bunch of stars as if we were going, bear with me here. So this part of her head here, let's just pretend there's a halo that runs just on the outside of it. So we're gonna leave a bit of gap. You might wanna start at the top in the center just so we know where to start. And maybe just stamp three more following that imaginary halo off to the side. They don't have to be all facing the same way. You just want, you know, the stars there. And then we've kind of framed her face with the stars, which I think is curish. I'm gonna use that same simplified star. I call this one the simplified one. This one's the extra detailed one. I just use that on the eyes. The rest are all the simple ones. And now I'm going to start from just underneath her chin over here, like her jawline. I wanna kind of wrap the stars around her body. So keeping, you know, maybe we can just start over her chest. We'll just cover her up, give her a bit of modesty. But then I wanna kind of angle them off. And you don't have to re-ink every single time. You can second generation ghost stamp some of them. I'm gonna cover most of her body. I'm gonna try and twist my stamp a little bit as well, just so they're not all facing the same way. We're gonna cover most of the body down past the thighs. And when we get to about this knee area, I'm gonna stop on this uh, left-hand side, like well, technically her right leg. I'm gonna stop over here, but I'm gonna continue the stars coming around off to the top and the side here to kind of look like it's wrapping around, you know, like it's a bit of a um, an asymmetrical skirt kind of an effect. But I do like that second generation ghost stamping, so don't be afraid to do that. And if anything, you might want to add a little extra something around the hips just to give her a nice shape. And that is absolutely everything. No, lies. <laughs> <laughs> Lies fallacies and fairy tales. Got two more stars to put on down by her feet. Because I just want it to look like she's flying on these little stars. There we go. That is officially finished. Now, to go and complete the whole loop, let's grab a grey Tombow marker. This is uh, just to put in all the shadows. So I'm going to put in a tiny little shadow under her nose and just colour that in. I'll leave it mostly white. A lot of the shading um, is just about putting a, a touch of the color somewhere in the shadow area and then leaving the rest of it white. 
So it doesn't have to be neat. In fact, if you start kind of loose and, you know, intuitive, you'll get away with a lot more than trying to make it super neat. So around her sidebones area, I'm going to give it a bit of shading, just in the ears too, just a little bit. I'm going to color her eyes, but I want to leave that white dot. You know the catch light that it stamps with? I do want to leave that open. Um, but the rest of it, I can kind of just shade above that. I'm going to follow her hairline that we've stamped out. With your Tombow brush marker or any kind of brush marker, really play with the pressure that you use to um, draw. So get really, really thin lines and really, really thick lines. You can even turn it on its side and get an extra thick line. But just remember to change your pressure as you go, adding in all these little hair details, make it look nice and finished. Because I want it to be colored in, but I don't really want to color the whole thing because I want all these stars to look like they're the main focus. So I'm going to put a bit of shadowing under the chin, just wash that down there. I'm going to put a bit of shadowing around the shoulder area, and then just run it down one side of the arm. It doesn't matter which, we're not going for realism today, or any day, to be honest. <laughs> this is still my channel. <laughs> We haven't suddenly become um, conscious or aware of the fact that the shadows don't ever look like they're in the right space. Um, I like there to be shadows, I just don't really care for realism in shadows. Unless I want to, but that's a rare day. And then I'm going to put the shadow on one side of the leg. Sorry, my phone just went off. And... I think we're pretty much good with that. The other thing I want to do is grab my yellow Tombow marker and now I just want to kind of be a little bit um, crazy by just tilting it on its side and roughly coloring in everywhere I see a star. I never knew how much I enjoyed Tombow markers until very very recently. I've used them a lot in the past for sketch flicks episodes but they've just come in a lot more handy recently. I don't know why all of a sudden they've become the MVP for me but I'm just really enjoying it. Um, something else I'm really enjoying as well is uh, I've got these Stedler Triplus fine liners and I have these Zig Clean Color Dot markers. I'm not recommending that you buy either of these. In fact, don't go and buy the Stedler Triplus fine liner if you're in Australia because they're very expensive. Um, maybe they're cheaper in the States, but I actually don't think you need these. But since I was given them as a gift, um, they've been actually really, really fun to use. Um, and the clean color, the dots, I never thought, I thought they were such a weird gimmick at the start. But now that I've been using them for like a few days, I know, so that's terrible to give a review after a few days. But I'm, I, I know, um, I know already that I really, really do enjoy them because I really don't, I love to put sprinkles of twinkles everywhere so like little dots and um, to be honest I wish they had a white one because the white one would be amazing for what I like to do with my mixed media stuff but the colored ones have worked really really well as, as well so I've been taking the dots and literally just adding um, just dots through the whole thing and much like the uh, like the Tombow dual brush markers where you can press harder or lighter and affect how uh, thick your line weight is you can do the same thing with the dot and the harder you press the thicker that um, or the wider the radius of that dot is. Radius? Circumference? What's the word? Um, in any case, I'm gonna put the dots everywhere I put my stars and just put a little, just a bunch of different size dots. You can obviously do this with a regular marker, just might take a little longer to get the dots a nice shape, which is why I like the dot, the dot marker. It was super quick, that happened so quickly, I can't even believe it. <laughs> Um, the next thing I'm going to do is take this yellow pen, since I've got it, I'm going to push all of these stars, um, I'm going to put a line that connects the star to the head, and then I'm going to roughly go over some of these star shapes. I don't want to go over everything, but I do just want to kind of replace some of that stamping ink with this yellow ink. The stars in themselves are already kind of wonky. That's how I design them, so you can get away with a lot. You don't have to actually follow the lines. It's more about placing this um, ink color there than it is, you know, tracing the stars. So when I go through the dress, I'm gonna just pick up on, you know, certain ones, not every single one. And if I can't be bothered to look for them, I might just draw them wherever I think they are. <laughs> That's also effective. 
So it's coming together really, really quickly. We might be finished in like literally a few minutes. All we have to do is the eyes now. Um, and so this is a pretty, pretty, pretty much, <laughs> sorry guys, my brain is going. Um, this is a good tutorial to kind of show how I typically do use these stamps. I don't like to sit down and labor over everything all the time. In fact, uh, the more I do, the less I am inclined to do that. I like to go quickly and I like to just enjoy the process happening, um, you know, really, really quickly so I can just do more of it. You know what I mean? Like I like playing like this, but I want to ditch this in 10 seconds and go and play in something else. Um, so I'm going to use my, what's this called? Pentel pigment brush. Is it pigment? It's pigment ink. I think it's called a Pentel pigment brush pen. I don't know. It's in black. I'm going to use that to add on my eyeliner. She's going to have a little wing. And by little, I mean very big. <laughs> and uh, and she's obviously going to have lashes. Always add lashes. How could you not? I mean, to be honest. I'm going to add some little bottom lashes too. Just spaced out. Just three sets of two little lashes. And then I'm going to color in just the top part of this... Um, of this iris. I don't want to color in the whole thing, but I do want to put some black up underneath the lash line just to darken it up. Give it a nice effect. Oh, we didn't do this in the original either, but I think I want to give her some little yellow freckles with the dot. There we go. And I think she's done. I think that's it. That's official. I'm going to call it on that. You know what? No, I'm not. <laughs> Psych. I'm going to add in little black for her nostrils. Just a touch. Just literally the slightest touch of black with the smallest, finest pen you have. I'm going to put that in there in the inner mouth line and in the nostril area. Maybe under the chin a little bit. There we go. And I'm lying. I'm going to put a few little stars in her freckles in black. Oh, this reminds me of my, um, yellow and black is not a combination I use very often, but it reminds me of my dance, <laughs> my dance, what's it called? I'm going to say dance academy. What's it called? My dance group? Where I used to dance when I was a little boy. Our team colors were, um, yellow and black. I think it was supposed to be black and gold maybe, but yellow and black is what I remember. I never use yellow and black together. <laughs> this is so random. Okay, I know I'm getting carried away now. I, I could just get carried away and go for days. That's it, I'm gonna call it. That's our super simple little tutorial today in real time. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll be doing these demos all weekend at Creativation, so hopefully I come up with a bunch of um, other fun and exciting stuff and um, maybe share it on Instagram Live. Maybe I'll even do that today. I might do it today. I know you won't see this video until Friday, but I might. maybe I'll go on Instagram Live right now. <laughs> I'm going to have some lunch first and then I might do it. Okay. I'll see you on Instagram live. And, um, thanks for watching. If you watched in the future, I'm going to be thanking you for today. Whatever. My brain is gone. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Good to spend time with you. I'll be back, uh, really, really soon for another video. Thank you for watching. Bye.